Hello, welcome to South Today. I'm Sally Taylor. The headlines tonight. At full stretch, hospitals in Bournemouth and Poole begin sending patients to the new Nightingale Hospital in Devon. Even if we can get five to ten patients there, and if we can make that happen two or three times in the next fortnight, I think that will just about see us through, but it's still very much on a knife edge. We're full and we need help. The hospitals in Bournemouth and Poole have, for the first time, had to make use of the Nightingale hospitals to ease the strain. Unable to open or staff new wards, dozens of Dorset patients are expected to be taken 80 miles to the Nightingale unit in Exeter over the next few weeks. Last night, our health correspondent Alistair Fee and cameraman Ian de Costa were invited to join the evening shift at the Royal Bournemouth to hear firsthand from staff about challenges and the impact of the pandemic. 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 38, 38, 38 are patients who've passed who've been waiting now for the undertakers to take them to their, their final resting places. I don't really know how you describe it. It's gone from OK to chaos. Yeah, it's uh, difficult. Everyone processes things in their own way. Um, yeah, I mean, I get choked up. This is an urgent, he's at home and he's at risk. Coping, yes, but this is also a hospital on the edge. We are absolutely full of patients with COVID on both sides. It's scary. Former professional rugby player and now a PE teacher, Patrick was admitted on Sunday, his 47th birthday. Oh, I'm feeling OK, as long as I don't try and do anything. This ward, like others, is nearing capacity. I think the, the myth you want to dispel is the fact that this can happen to anyone. For the first time today, patients with COVID will be driven to the Nightingale Hospital in Exeter. Even if we can get five to ten patients there, that's half a ward, that will last us and get us through the next few days. And if we can make that happen two or three times in the next fortnight, I think that will just about see us through, but it's still very much on a knife edge. Let's take one day at a time and see where we go. Alan caught the virus after going to help a neighbour who had collapsed with COVID. He told me of his frustration with people who continue to ignore the rules. I think mean, it's disgraceful what some people are doing, I really do. I, I know you shouldn't say it, but you, you almost get to a stage where if there was any justice, all the people like myself and many, many families like that have made that sacrifice and obeyed all the rules to find that somebody else's fault didn't get away with it and you haven't, it hurts. Even if more room could be found here, the Trust simply doesn't have enough staff. More than 600 are off with COVID in isolation or shielding. When I first followed a shift here back in October, staff were very honest about their fears for the winter because they were stretched then, but nobody expected this. We knew it was going to be much worse than previous winters. Um, however, I think it's still, I think I still find, I still wasn't expecting it to be quite this bad. It's just getting busier and busier and busier as the days, the weeks go on, as the minutes go on. We've got a job for a COVID patient leaving A&E, going on to the wards. As this night got later, I watched as the pressure increased in A&E, as ambulances brought in yet more patients with COVID for whom beds needed to be found. Knowing that someone else is there that can help absorb what's coming through at the moment is, is a massive relief. When you're thinking about 10 that go, instead of having that 10 and another 10 in it being almost an entire ward again, um, it will have an impact, although however small that number sounds. Hospitals, now many miles apart, are pulling together. Yet again, doctors and nurses stress we can all make a difference by staying home. People will die because of the actions of others. Speaking to families on the phone, when you've said that family gathering you had at Christmas has ended up with your grandparent catching COVID and they are sadly going to die in the next 24 hours. And that penny drops is sad, so sad. Very often you find that the patients haven't been able to see relatives and so they've had a nurse for company, which is fantastic, but it's not the same as having your children with you or your grandchildren. For weeks ahead, the tragedy of this pandemic will continue every day.
Alistair Fee, BBC South today. Well, we can see there in uh, Al's report how the Royal Bournemouth Hospital is under huge pressure and it's certainly not alone.